Hello, I'm Nick Coons with the Red7 YouTube channel, and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about uh, why computers start to run slow over time, and what you can do to tweak the performance of your system, or what you can have done to your system to tweak the performance if you don't feel comfortable doing this. Uh, I would imagine most people would, just like most people who are not auto mechanics probably wouldn't feel comfortable tweaking their cars, uh, though definitely some people would. So, uh, start off basically with uh, computers and uh, as far as why they run slower. This is one thing that uh, confuses a lot of people because you know they'll get a new computer and it will run just fine uh, for you know months or maybe a year and it'll start getting slower as they use it more and more it gets slower and slower and they have it for you know three four years and it's just so slow it takes forever to turn on it takes forever to turn off it takes so long to open programs everything's just slow to a crawl and this is very, a very common phenomenon uh, with Windows computers um, and the, the I guess the the logical thought that most people come to and it sounds like it's you know reasonable um, is that the computers wearing out now that might be true that some of the moving parts in there are wearing out but this probably wouldn't be contributing to the, the slowness at least not in most cases so what you know that the most of the computer um, is, is electronic devices uh, and, and those things don't generally wear out in the sense that they don't get slower. I mean, they kind of they either work or they don't. Um, and they don't uh, they don't wear out over time in the sense that you know they don't like erode away and just stop functioning um, or or function slowly. They do just stop functioning. They don't just function slowly. So it's not really the computer wearing out so much. There's a couple of reasons why your computer would be running slower. Uh, today and then when you first got it a couple of years ago if your computer is a few years old and uh, the software has never been reloaded or anything like that. The first reason, the most common, is that there are too many programs running at once. And um, you have to look at more than just the programs that you run. There are programs that you run, you open your browser, you open your email client, you open your word processing software, uh, whatever programs that you open, those are ones that you open and they are making the computer run slower if you have multiple things open at once. Um, all those are going to take some of the computer's resources. But there are a lot of programs that you don't run on your own that kind of run on their own when you install them. In fact, I mean, the, the problem is that most programs that you install think that they are the absolute most important programs that are on your computer. And so when you turn your computer on, they set themselves up to start. Uh, some of those programs are important and they do need to run when you turn your computer on. Other ones, not so much. Uh, a good example of one that runs when you turn your computer on that you do want to run is your antivirus program. Your antivirus is going to run in the background and kind of keep an eye on everything that you do, scanning all those files that you open or put on your computer for viruses to see if there's any issues with them. And if so, keep you you know safe from those. That's the idea with the antivirus software. Um, there are some other programs that you might have, uh, like a, a, a smartphone that you sync, that you want that running all the time, so you just plug in your phone and it starts the syncing process. Uh, there are probably a lot of other programs that are installed that you don't want running all the time. Uh, maybe your printer software. Maybe you just maybe you decide you want to open that when you're going to print. You don't always need that open. Maybe you don't always need your Office uh, client or some quick launch version of your Office client running in the background. Maybe you don't always need Adobe Acrobat Reader running in the background or a quick launch version of it that's taking your resources. Um, those are things that are generally benign that run in the background. There are things that are more malicious that run in the background, and those things can be like spyware and malware. And uh, you know, if someone's writing a, a program to to spy on your system or to take over information from your system or to take over your system altogether, uh, they're not going to be generally too concerned that the software runs efficiently, that the software is not bloated, that the software uh, doesn't cause damage to your computer. They're probably just going to write the program quickly and get it out there. I don't think it goes through a lot of Q&A when it's malicious software. So uh, those things can tend to slow your computer down. They can cause conflicts with other things that are running in your system. So what you'd want to do is, obviously in one of my previous videos, I talked about protecting your computer and scanning it for malware and spyware on a pretty regular basis using a program called Malwarebytes that you can download for free at malwarebytes.org. You probably want to run that about once a month. There's uh, other programs, again, the ones that are benign that run in the background, and you can remove those ones if you're running XP or newer. You can run those from, uh, remove those from MS Config and also from Windows Millennium. Uh, if you're running 2000 or older, uh, you would have to go into the registry and remove those. Um, 
either of those cases, you'd probably want to have some professional do that for you if you're not familiar with the, with the program running in the background because the only way you know what to remove and what not to remove is because you recognize what's there. You know what things are supposed to run with the system when it starts up. You know what things are not required to run with the system. And if you do this on a regular basis, you have a pretty good idea of that so you can remove those things safely without causing any damage. Um, the other thing is uh, temporary internet files that are downloaded to the system. Everything that you see on your computer when you browse the web is being downloaded to your computer first and saved in what's called a cache. It's a temporary location. At least it's supposed to be temporary. And a lot of programs are not so good at cleaning up after themselves. So you have to go in there manually and delete those temporary files or the temporary internet files or the cache that your browser saves. Uh, a lot of times those things have to be removed manually. Having too many of those can slow your computer down because when you have lots and lots of files in a single folder, the system has to kind of index those um, so that it knows how to open them later on. And I mean, it's kind of like if you had a, um, you know, a file folder in an empty filing cabinet versus a file folder in a full filing cabinet, even though they might be alphabetized, it's still going to take you a little longer to find it because you have to find a starting point folder and then go either forward or backward in the alphabet from there to find your target folder. So when it's full, it's going to take longer for you to find it than when it's empty. So you want to make sure you clear those out on a regular basis. Um, the, as far as hardware goes, the single most important thing that can slow your computer down is not enough memory. Adding more memory, and memory is cheap, so this is a good way to go, can speed up your, your computer if you're not running enough memory. So if you have you know half a gig of RAM and you're running XP Service Pack 3, you might want to bump that into a full gig, and you can probably do that pretty inexpensively if you have 20, 30 bucks. Not really that big of a deal. Um, Another thing that can slow your computer down on the software side, uh, and this is one thing that people don't recognize either, is that their computer, you know, over time, they, uh, they get new software for it. And new software, almost always without exception, requires more resources than its older counterpart versions. So uh, Windows XP requires more than Windows 2000, Windows Vista requires more than XP. Um, oddly enough, Windows 7 is one of those rare exceptions that doesn't require more than Vista. But in most cases, uh, even going from Service Pack to Service Pack, you're going to see a difference. With Windows XP Service Pack 2 uh, to XP Service Pack 3, the latter requires more resources than, than the former. And Service Packs, a lot of times the Windows are updated automatically through Windows updates, so you're not going to, to know necessarily that that's happened on your system. Uh, it could have just happened in the background and you didn't know about it, and you were queued to restart, and so you did. Um, and now you have Service Pack 3, you didn't even know, and all of a sudden your computer runs slower. Now, that's not to say Service Pack 3 is a bad thing. It has security updates, and, you know, it's a good thing to have, and you want to have that. Uh, but it is going to make your computer run slower because it's more resource-intensive than Service Pack 2. But from the layman's perspective, you're going to see that, well, I haven't upgraded any software. I'm using all the same stuff I was using before. Why is my computer running slower? And that's generally going to be why, because you have updates applied, and those updates are going to require more resources than the former versions of the software. And the last thing that I can mention that's very common is running out of hard drive space. Now, with the way NTFS is set up, NTFS being the file system that Windows uses, uh, NTFS starts to run slower, hard drive access becomes slower when you have less than 20% free space. And uh, so you want to make sure that you always have at least 20% free space, and if you run out of space, then you'd want to be looking at, at uh, replacing the hard drive, or you start to run out of space, you want to look at replace, replacing the hard drive with something that's larger, uh, moving any data off the machine that doesn't need to be there, and, and of course defragmenting on a regular basis is good as well, but defragmenting is very is not very effective unless you have at least 15 or 20 percent free space. If you have less than that, the system's not going to defragment effectively. It might defragment a little bit, but you're going to see when you start it, it's going to look very much the same as when you finish it. It's not going to have much of an improvement at all. So. Uh, if you want to have someone go through and remove all of your temporary files and defragment your hard drive and make sure your system is free of malware and spyware and viruses and clearing out your browsing cache and making sure you don't have excess programs running at startup, uh, you can definitely bring your computer to Red 7. That service for us is called a tune-up. And we go through and we do all of those things for you. So if your computer is really bogged down, it's running a lot slower than when you first got it. A tune-up is generally going to be a good way to go. Maybe if you have not enough memory, a tune-up plus memory upgrade is a good way to go also, and it's pretty inexpensive. It doesn't really, you know, it doesn't cost a lot, doesn't take a lot of time, and it's generally very effective in making your computer run faster. Of course, if you want to contact us, you can visit red7linux.com, 
can visit our Facebook fan page. And of course, I'd recommend, as always, that everyone subscribe to, to these videos so that you can stay up to date on all the different tips and, and such that we have out for you. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in.